Welcome back to the Actual VR Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Mann, the owner of Actuality VR. This is the podcast where we give you a behind-the-scenes look at the VR revolution in real time with real professionals. We take a look at immersive tech news and interview professionals in the respective fields. Today, we're joined by the Phil Illuminati and talking to Phil Walton about his role as a certified Snapchat lens creator and his co-ownership at Big Bonsai, an immersive tech agency here in Nashville. But first, we're joined by team member Patrick as we talk about the new stories we covered on the actual VR show this Monday. Don't forget, if you've been enjoying this and all other content we put out, to subscribe on your platform of choice. With that said, let's go. All right, guys, we're here. We're here with a, uh, a uh, somebody you've met before. You guys, you guys know him. He's a team videographer, all around, just big idea, creative flux of information. He's a good looking dude. The man with the stash, Patrick Robinson. Oh man, thank you. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. And it's a pleasure, as always. Of course, man. Well, so we, in this segment, what we do is we take everything that we talked about on the actual VR show that comes out every Monday on Facebook and YouTube, uh, and we we break them down. And this week, we talked about the LA Dodgers using uh, virtual reality training, uh, specifically so for identifying uh, pitchers. Uh, we talked about Oculus Connect 6, which is going down... Um, well, next next week, uh, two weeks from now, mm. uh, and then we have uh, the VR sandals by Cyber Shoes, which was a um, which was a pretty interesting thing. But we're gonna start. We're gonna, we're gonna take back a little bit. We're gonna talk about that LA Dodger story. So, Win Reality is the company that created this training, and what it does is it it allows you to understand the velocity and release point of pitchers. So, as a as a major league uh, baseballer you're able to look at a pitcher that you're going to be playing against and know, okay, statistically, when their hand releases at this point, this velocity, um, at this speed, or I already said velocity, but- I'm you hitting know, a dinger. I'm hitting a dinger. Like, I know exactly, <laughs> like, I know when to swing, when, and it's it's, it's all about that split second reaction time. They're not hitting the ball. There's no mechanical, because I think we're not quite there yet with VR training, but it was super cool. Yeah. And, and how this is this is used these these players they're going to come out just incredibly more sharp. Um, I have this weird background. I'm in technology now. I came from exercise science, so I have this exercise oh, science yeah. degree. And one of the key components that I remember was sports psychology. And we went through this process. It was a world renowned Dr. Greg Steinberg. Uh, I mean, this guy has been in any book. Anytime they interview on CNN or He's he's the one that's being asked, really? like, what does this mean from a sports psychology's perspective? And he, he'll give out all the information. So this reminded me of something that he taught, which was visualization and having those oh. uh, those moments. And they, they did studies where uh, basketball players would you know go above the line and they would simulate in their mind. And the uptick in free throw rate was astronomically higher with the really? folks that were actually visualizing. So. I'm anticipating the the Dodgers doing really well this season. If you haven't bet on them, you might want to because this is going to be epic. <laughs> I it's know visualization nothing about on baseball. another level. <laughs> it's dynamic. You're able to plug and play with the actual metrics from you know the the pitcher that you're going up against. That's insane. That I think that was probably the most like the fact that they've collated all this data. This this data already existed, right? But yeah. we didn't have like I mean they had those stats, but there's no way to really visualize. What do you do it. with them? Yeah, yeah. What do you other than knowing the stats like I, yeah for sure i didn't think about it from a sports psychology perspective the yeah. ability to visualize what you don't have to do it in your mind's eye anymore yeah. like it's it's there it's actually um i don't know if you um looked at the we talk about football they use it for football training and what they did is quarterbacks used it to be able to identify defense looks mm. so it was all about it wasn't about you know people think vr training like oh throw the ball better like it's not you know it's not necessarily that yet it's like those split when you're talking about a one percent difference in performance that's the difference between the national championship championship yeah so i mean going you, to the bowl going to the bowl <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so that, i mean i think that i think that's super cool when reality it's it was created by an ex minor league uh catcher mm. uh so he understands the sport and are they uh, using the varo no, I don't think they are. Every every picture I've seen, they have the vibe. All the yeah. Varo. I th actually think that w they interviewed some of the players, and one of the things that they talked about was that the they're still limited by the resolution of that the um, that's what it the is. headset. So they're um, 
you know, that was the number one complaint. If there was a complaint, there was a bug that just flew around everywhere. He's our little buddy, uh-huh. our mascot, mascot, <laughs> uh, mascot Scott. Uh, <laughs> this we'll call him, we'll call him Scott, Scott the bug. All right. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the, uh, one of the limitations of the fact that they can, uh, baseball is really hard to see, especially how I think what thirty feet, fifty feet. I don't know how how far away is a pitcher's mound from. I do not know, but uh, I believe it's ninety feet. Okay. Ninety feet. Yeah. Producer Casey, he you know what he is the Google machine oh, uh, without baseball. Google. No, I didn't Google it. I think I just knew it. Because <laughs> I'm like, how how can uh, who was it? But did Obama throw a really bad opening pitch oh, one time? Yeah. Uh, there, like, how, been... how, how, how can someone throw a pitch that badly? <laughs> or, it's 90 feet. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I believe it's 90 feet. Uh, I'm going to have to fact check that, and actually I'll put a big old uh, my face with uh, <laughs> with bunny ears on it in case I ram wrong. <laughs> yeah, they, in in sports psychology, they, they talk about just the split-second decision-making, and that's, that's, that's the crucial. You're going to grow. Yeah. And, yeah. It, yeah. So, so we also had, um, we talked about next, we talked about the Oculus Connect 6. This is, I keep calling it the Oculus. It, it's Oculus <laughs> Connect 6. And it's a... Um, the six. internet. It is a... <laughs> look it up on the, the internet. Facebook. <laughs> the Facebook. <laughs> so speaking of Facebook, yeah, Oculus Connect 6. So this is a, a, a time when um, it's, a, it's a conference where all of Facebook's leading developers and product managers and essentially all of the people that are head over... Uh, Oculus in the Facebook organization, sixty feet six inches. Oh, my apologies. Um, yeah, I expect that. We are split uh, in the middle. <laughs> that bunny ear pick. I'm. Uh, you gotta, do it now. <laughs> you gotta follow through. I'm the holding you to it. Won it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, folks. Here it is. <laughs> is it? What is it? Right here. Oh, right here. What is it? Right. What is that? Uh, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. So Oculus Connect Six. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, they're gonna have a bunch of talks from some of the the heads over at Oculus. Uh, some of the other creators. It's really it's a great um, great time. And I talked about some of the the stories that were or some of the talks that I was interested in in the actual VR show. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, you can check it out on our YouTube or Facebook. Uh, it is the actual VR show. Uh, so yeah, I mean they have the the creator of Beat Saber uh, that's going to be doing a talk, uh, dive into the history behind Beat Saber's creation, and here the Beat Games team as they share the lessons learned from building, launching, and iterating on one of VR's most popular titles. I mean there 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 are so many. Um, this one, the, which the one? Quest I'm mixed most reality about mixed that. reality capture for Quest. I'm a Quest advocate and user. It's been a uh, dramatic lifestyle change for me. So yeah. this. The, this mastermind group of uh, just brilliant people coming together, there's going to be nothing but great things that comes like for the industry. Uh, it's 100%. Just, it's filling Moore's Law. I talked about that on the last episode. Yeah, And technology, you did. tech ethics, Moore's Law is at the crux of all of this. And there's, we're still exponentially growing. There's no telling what, I mean, I mean, they're talking about, the, the Quest already exists. They're talking about ways of making, using the Quest as a tool to make even better things. Like it, it, it being it, as amazing as the Quest is, like which revolutionized VR gaming for people. I mean, it is the Xbox. It is the console in the home that you can have. It's the same price point. You get an even better experience, uh, a more immersive experience in these, these, uh, these games and these experiences. So, when we talk about that's just the beginning, mm. it's insane. Let me let me ask you this. So, I think the guy sold Oculus for what two billion? It was insane to Facebook, right? Yeah. Do you think we would be where we are right now as an industry without him doing that? No, no. I think Facebook had to take it. As mm-hmm. much as I, Facebook's doing some cool stuff. Like I, I was in a Billie Eilish concert the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oculus venues. It was. I mean, uh, last night. The guy from Saturday Night Live that date Ariana Grande. Uh, he, he we talked her. about him earlier today, didn't we? Uh, what a real ugly guy, um, Pete Davidson. Yeah. He, yeah, Pete he, Davidson. <laughs> he had a live performance last night. I, I had a notification from the Oculus app on my phone yeah. that said, "Hey, Pete Davis is having his uh, Gotham uh, live performance." Yeah, I've seen a ton of comedy. Reggie Watts did one. Billie Eilish. So of course, you're, you're seeing the entertainment realm combined with this virtual realm and it's happening a lot faster than i was expecting to be honest you know that's a that's an aspect of um vr that doesn't get talked about enough or maybe this is not enough but a lot of people don't know about it's a social aspect with uh, within oculus venues you can sit next to complete strangers in an audience so you can sit next to somebody and have a conversation you can talk about the show you can share this experience with with people a complete stranger or you can choose to you know enjoy it 
alone by yourself and you can just kind of see the people around and you can tell that they're having conversations and it's a really cool uh, if you haven't checked out Oculus venues Oculus venues mm-hmm. I highly recommend you do it me too me too and so the, the the final story we talked about VR sandals Cyber Shoes is the company they created this VR sand it kind of looks like a snowboard binding that you put over your feet and you get this rug that goes around in a circle so you're sitting in a swivel chair I know uh, for some of you that aren't uh, watching you're just listening imagine you sitting in a swivel chair like a, a bar stool that turns around 360 there's a circular rug that goes around you and you strap on these sandals that go on like, with snowboard bindings and you just flutter kick you just kind of that's your uh i don't know if you can hear that right there uh <laughs> but that's essentially what you do and you know i i will say i i, I even mentioned on the, sh- the show the caveat i never tried it I, I i have not tried these these shoes i haven't even full disclosure haven't tried the omni um i I'm a little bit more patient on it, but I do. Um, it was a little weird to me. It was like uh, I don't, I don't really know, know what to think. We did have somebody on the uh, on our YouTube community comment um, on our VR show saying that they really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, it was really good. I, actually, they said it was better than the Omni. Are you? Have you experienced anything with? I've experienced uh, bumping into my children <laughs> whenever I'm playing uh, dodgeball in uh, a, a game on the quest I, i've done that before and I'm, I'm quite excited this this allows you to sit in a in a specified space mm-hmm. and experience the real joy that comes from vr and it's sometimes just being active you know from a healthcare background imagine you know being at home and now you have a means of exercising whenever you didn't even really want to yeah you know? uh, it's going to be life-changing uh, i think this is where vr is going to be going and uh there, there's there's just a lot of joy that will come from it yeah, I definitely think there's a um I I'm excited to see cuz that's what we want. Everybody wants to be able to have that full roam experience, but nobody has an entire warehouse of space. Yeah. So how do we solve that problem of wanting to explore space with our bodies without having the space? Um, I think that's the problem they're trying to solve. It's immersion. I have a question yeah. about the sandals thing. Mm-hmm. Because the Omni is is a pretty dumb idea. I'm going to go ahead and say that <laughs> as a producer and not as a part of Actuality VR as a company. <laughs> uh, Actuality VR as a company is very pro uh, uh, innovation. But the fact that it's like a big, basically one of those like little child's chairs. It's not practical. It's not practical. It's not great. Yeah. Has anyone, th- and even with the, the, the flutter step on these sandals, I like it, but has anyone even thought to just put like pressure uh, sensors on the toes and on the heels to move forward and backwards? Mm. So more of a board. rocking motion. It would yeah, feel like more like a board. It would yeah. feel like more no, like I'm, a I'm just saying like, with your, like you, put, you put your toe down and then you move forward and it's like just pressure sensitive and you put your heel down to move backward and that's just on one foot. So that's one. More like a gas pedal. Yeah, like a gas of... pedal like back for a second. You know, know. that's, well, it's an interesting thought too. Cause I, I do think the problem they're they're trying to skip that step and go straight to how do we how do we get the locomotion movement of our legs? How do we move our legs to because that actually helps with motion sickness. That's part of the reason why your body is moving. Like you feel like your body's like oh I'm walking. Like there's it helps solve that. And it's one of the the, uh, the one of the testimonials that you do hear about uh, the cyber shoes is that. A lot of people, it was emotion sickness has been solved, or and same with the wow. Omni. Um, I've got motion sick. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it helps. Uh, it helps with helps with that a little bit. Your body's more convinced that you're moving. That was my question. Like le- legitimately, that was like, shouldn't they wait till they figure out how to solve motion sickness <laughs> before before they start? Like you know, they're, it's like they're literally putting the 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 horse before the or the carriage before the horse, cart before the horse. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. An el- Nick says an elliptical machine. The, pr- <laughs> the practicality of an elliptical machine. They have re- re- retro mods. Like gazelle, right? Yeah, yeah just <laughs> look at that guy from the gazelle commercials. Just... Or, On that note, yeah. we uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up because we got we have a very special guest with us for segment two. Patrick, I want to I want to super special. Thank you so much. You are our special guest for this for the first segment thank here, you. and thank you for being on. It's good to have you back on, man. Love it. Every I get time. to I get to see you and work with you, and I I enjoy it. And just being here uh, on the on the show, I definitely definitely mm. appreciate you doing it. I receive putting that. in your two. I re- <laughs> I receive that. <laughs> If you look up Phil Walton on the internet, you'd see on his portfolio that he's an accomplished writer. He's an accomplished animator. He's an accomplished designer. 
But most recently, he's the accomplished creative director and co-owner over at Big Bonsai, a company that takes VR and AR elements for their clients and helps them engage them in the real world. You most commonly know Phil for his Snapchat lenses such as John Wick's dog, the Alexander Hamilton dollar, $10 bill, and my personal favorite, the Boople Dupe. Over 80 million Snapchat lens views later, he's here in the studio, Mr. Phil Walton. Hi. Uh, the... 80 million is not an accurate number. No, it's not. It's not. No. <laughs> where, it, where are we at here? Let, let's see what it is now. <laughs> this is this is amazing. Yeah, it's compelling as you wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, dun, yeah, dun. we're up to 216 million. So uh, to, total, by, total <laughs> <laughs> by factors, uh, dude, that's that's incredible, man. Uh, well, I mean, there's a there's so much to unpack because what I what I've learned is that you have a very um, diverse background in the type of work that you've done. Yeah. It's all been within the creative space for the most part. It's all been you're able to, um, which you went to the Art Institute in Portland. Yeah. So after I got out of the the Air Force, I was in the Air Force for six years, and I was like, yeah. this is not creatively fulfilling. So <laughs> I went to the Art Institute of Portland and got my degree in media arts and animation got my bachelor's degree and right after that uh got a job at a, a small animation studio in edina minnesota doing this show called auto be good it was like character education for kids and so cool yeah i did that i was with them for about 10 years just doing all kinds of stuff so i did everything from writing books to um uh, building websites and <laughs> Yeah, and, I saw that everything in the production environment for like 3D animation. Do you find that kind of having that create that ability to kind of switch gears and and ch change the medium creatively is a is is a healthy thing? Like, do you do that? I, I found that you know, obviously, the 360 video that I do, the editing is primarily what I do. But having the opportunity to go in and maybe create a graphic for something or write something is really yeah, it's really so nice. I, yeah, I get kind of bored doing the same thing <laughs> <laughs> all the time, and so. It it has been kind of cool to to push myself and try new things and learn something new. I, I'm I, I like to be kind of a lifelong learner, so anytime I can dive in and try a try a new format or a new project or you know something like that, I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, one of the themes that um, that I found when I was doing a doing a deep dive into your your background is that. Um, you you've done a lot of work with uh like kids shows and kids content yeah um you you're a family man you have kids of your own yep um and uh i, I really thought it was fascinating and it, we we talked the other day about how you have this kind of unique opportunity you're, you're a snapchat uh influencer if you will yeah i'm, um, a, I'm a verified account you're on, a verified on, account on, on snapchat not so. too many of those out there no, and and a lot of them are are like celebrities or musicians or athletes and stuff like that. Right. It, but all of, all of the official lens creators, which is what I am, um, have a verified account, and so you get that little gold star next to your name. Nice. And people are constantly like writing me messages saying, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "That's a good question. I don't really know." <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, well. So Snapchat primarily is a it's a it's a there's a lot of kids on the platform or younger not necessarily kids yeah, but a, younger right yeah the the demographic primarily skews like thirteen to like twenty four year olds is right. is a majority I I think their last statistic was like ninety percent of of like American British Australian and german kids use snapchat like every day of of that really? of that demographic so yeah it's a it's a pretty big audience that's amazing you know i you're familiar with gary vaynerchuk yeah um, gary v he he's a huge proponent of snapchat and i think one of the primary reasons is that he um he loves the attention he's a marketer right uh, you have a captive audience for that uh however many you seconds. do yeah you're you're right there and it's it's like very quickly digestible content that's mm -hmm. on your phone and you know everybody has phones these days so yeah. they can just whip out their phone and see what's going on in the world see what's going on with their friends and you know it's like everything's right there yeah well, so you you told me about um you have this anonymous question feature or there's there is an anonymous yeah, so there's, question there's feature. these apps that that 
that use Snapchat mm. to that you can you can ask anonymous questions. One of them's called YOLO. The other one is Send It. And <laughs> those are perfect names. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it it lets it lets users like send you anonymous messages and yeah, you know, ho- hopefully they're not too outrageous or something like that. And right. I I've gotten a lot of engagement through that. That's like. A lot of people contact me all the time on that. I get, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 messages a day. That's insane. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. And that's like lately, you know, it's like back to school. So a lot of kids are like, how do I deal with stress in my new class? Or I'm I'm going into the ninth grade and any advice for me? (laughs) And, you know, so back in my day when I went to ninth grade. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was like, how do I not get bullied? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, you've kind of, it, it's been an unintended um, position that, that you've you've kind of found yourself in where you have these kids that are asking you, you know, some silly questions, but some real questions as well. Like yeah, some really... like, like stuff that matters to them. And I, I try to be as honest as I can. I mean, sometimes I'm funny and, and you <laughs> <So> know, <laughs> goofing with them a little bit. The dad but... jokes are on point, yeah, by the yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> being a dad, it's my, it's my right and privilege to, to tell <laughs> as many dad jokes as I want. But I also... I do try to like give good advice and stuff that I think will will help them and you know everyone is seems to really appreciate it and stuff. That's that's super cool, man. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those things when when I first got in the business for myself, one of the things that the reasons why I chose to go out of the um the 9 to 5 routine and the 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 job space is I wanted to be able to scale my ability to help other people to in some degree. Yeah. It turned out that for me it was uh, initially, it's the fact that when I put VR headsets on people, they immediately smile. Like that's like the VR smile is a thing, right? Um, and uh, you know, it's just really cool to be able to that you're able to leverage your talents and your creative ability to to help a, a mass of people that you wouldn't have been able to, or perhaps never been able to. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, even think I to. wanted to do this kind of thing. I mean, I yeah. I, I mostly did it because uh, I like the immediacy. And creativity you can do when you're making Snapchat lenses. I've made, I've got like almost 90 of them live right now. (laughs) And, and some of them, like, I think we can show like the, the pickle one. The, oh, the pickle. Yeah. The the pickle one is my most popular one. So I'm going to pull some up right now. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Give me one sec. Show that. Um, the pickle me is the pickle me (laughs) is the the name of this lens and it's super popular. Um, I think it's had like 60 million views by itself. Just, That's insane. Yeah. So, so yeah, here it is, or, this is this is me <laughs> using <laughs> using the pickle. So if you're if you're listening to this and not not watching, uh, right now we've got uh, we we pulled up a video of his lens, the pickle me lens, and essentially yeah, it, it turns you into a pickle. So like <laughs> I. I think there's an episode of Rick and Morty where he turns himself into yep, a pickle. Pickle Rick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That might have been an inspiration, but this is I I end up making a lot of lenses like this where it's like a like a floating a floating object with your eyes and mouth yeah. on it and and that's what's going on here. And you know, this kind of So this is my ticket lens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The eyes and, and the eyes and mouth fit so perfect in this in this uh, yeah there model. there is kind of a balance that you have to strike like where you're putting you're putting the features and stuff yeah. I've, I've got other ones that I've tried and I'm like yeah it looks it looks a little too grotesque but this is actually kind of <laughs> kind of cute it's very clean it's, it's cute by how you know like where you space things together and this this is another one that's really popular is the the jellyfish one. I'm really proud of it. I'm proud of the motion on that. Oh <laughs> yeah! So yeah, when you move your head, got kind that of popular on TikTok because they're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the jellyfish will actually when you move your head, it kind of flows behind you. It's in water and it has this really nice smooth motion. Yeah, um, dude, that's really cool. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is another. <laughs> I I don't know what came over me, but. You know, Peppa Peppa Pig has become kind of a meme these days. Like, yes. Peppa, what are you doing in my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I, I made one. Great. Yeah, this oh. I like that a lot. This is I, I did one that was like legit looked like Peppa. <laughs> and this was I, I, got uh, I, forgot, I didn't I get to hear the. <laughs> the... <laughs> yeah, so it has a voice changer on it. it sounds really creepy. This is the first time I've heard the voice with hear? that. Huh? But didn't you get to hear? 
The no, I I heard it now. This is the first time I actually heard the voice on this uh the cartoon oh, pig one. Uh the laugh at the end is pretty yeah, pretty great. funny. Yeah, this oh. I like that a lot. This was I, I did one that was like legit looked like Peppa and then I I got taken down for copyright. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I did yes. <laughs> So if you didn't hear that it was yeah, it, it looked too much like Peppa, and yeah, you can't do that. So this one does not look like Peppa. No. Well, it's in that it looks like Peppa, in that it's a pink pig. Yeah, we can we can probably turn the sound off on these. Uh, yeah, let's it, go ahead and turn it. This is a this is another one that I did that's a steampunk theme. Yeah, and puts like the gears and stuff inside your head, which is was kind of a unique challenge to to, to like mask that out to make it look like it was actually gears inside your head. yeah and not only that but there's like a parallax effect there's depth to those gears when you turn your head you can see yeah, the depth right I, that's really cool and it's a really solid track mm -hmm. I like what you do with the eyes yeah so that's that is a good a good point like why i like snapchat as a platform like their their tools are super solid um yeah the tracking is amazing you it really immerses you like anytime if it if it's not working right your eye sees that and you're just like no i don't like this yeah i think some people who have maybe just just maybe checked out just a little bit into ar as a as a, an entire medium yeah. will notice that some of the tracking with i know i notice a lot with android which is um uh not ar kit but um ar core no. ar core yeah ar core Cor ar kit is apple AR core is Android, yeah. but like some of the tracking may not be solid, and that kind of takes you out of that that elute, that immersion immersion. Yeah, and that that's a super solid. So uh, you mentioned the tools for Snapchat. I do want to because so if anybody's listening or, or watching who you know you've seen all the things that are happening uh, with AR filters and with Snapchat and with Facebook and Instagram these these platforms that are incorporating these. Uh, AR filters on your on your face. Yeah, that's there's a um, there's obviously a process on how to do that, and there's some things you have to learn to right. be able to do that. Yeah. So for the people that are maybe interested in it, who um, just just kind of doing their research, like oh, this would be cool. I like I want to learn how to create this. Yeah, and the, well, the good news is that they they've opened it up to the public, and they they really want people to come on and 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 be building stuff because it's it's fun. It it increases engagement. It helps them because. You're you're kind of creating content for them to yeah. to keep people on their platform and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I really really do like Lens Studio, which is Snapcat Snapchat's. Uh, Snapcat would be a good Snapcat. name though. Snapcat. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Write that one down. <laughs> Actually, uh, could you pull that? Um, could you pull that one up, uh, Casey? The this the Len, Snap Lens Studio. Lens Studio. Yeah. yeah, this is this is their software tools. Um, it's really. Like I started using it. I come from a 3D background with no programming, and I I thought, you know, if you're if you're building an AR kit or AR core, there's there's probably yeah. some programming you need to know to to be able to use mm -hmm. that. But for this, it's so it's so user friendly that that's cool. You can just jump in and get started if you if you have like an art background or a 3D background, you know how to create like digital art files and stuff. It's really easy to jump in and. Mm -hmm. So coming from the background in animation, yeah. so you obviously had a, a skill set before you got into Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, what were some of those things that you learned that you felt helped you the most when you transitioned into, or maybe not just transition, but added Snapchat lenses to your 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 portfolio, your repertoire, your your tool set? Yeah. So uh, 3D modeling is is really critical. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a lot of my stuff is is 3D models, modeling, texturing, um, some some lighting, but um, basically being able to to make stuff that looks good inside a lens and yeah and knowing how to plug that in do you what uh what 3d modeling software do you like to use uh, i use maya primarily maya yeah maya 3d modeling is a is a realm that i have i thought oh <laughs> this could be like i'm just gonna just take a quick just dip my yeah, toe yeah, in the 3D model. No, it's, yeah, it's no. <laughs> the, like the learning curve is like this. Yes. <laughs> um, I found that out very quickly. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, like Maya costs money, so that's kind right. of a barrier for a lot of people. But Blender is a free program that is awesome. 3D software, and, yeah. and a lot of people use that for, for building stuff. Could you use... Um, so even if you just wanted to just experiment with some models that already exist, could you use could yeah? You go so to there, Sketchfab there are, or, right? Yeah. So I I sometimes go onto Sketchfab and grab 
grab yeah. stuff or like part of a model like oh, i just need some steampunk glasses or something like that i'll yeah <laughs> you grab them i'll go snag those <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um so you you do um you now you're creative director and co-owner of big bonsai yeah uh which is a vr ar uh studio business solution uh here in nashville so we actually uh for people that don't know uh, there for a little while, I uh, we we shared an office. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came to Marathon in Nashville. Uh, uh, the the commute. Well, you, you live a little bit further than I do. You're yeah. going up the 24 <laughs> corridor, right? Yeah, I'm, um, yeah. But, I'm I'm south, so it's it's sure. it's a good 40 minute drive on Woo. a good day. Yeah. So I I do work from home a lot. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, to be able to do to be able to work from home is is pretty crucial uh, with that type of commute. Yeah. Um, but you at Big Bonsai, this is a service that you guys offer. You guys do the right. Snapchat we do vir- lens. virtual reality, augmented reality, yeah. and, and Snapchat. It's kind of kind of our our expensive medium tier and 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 most accessible nice <laughs> type of options and stuff. But I thought it was really cool. The um, Casey, could you pull up the the book one, the book cover? Um, that was so. That's yeah, not. So snap- I, I think a lot of yeah, what you're talking about. A lot of people think Snapchat is like funny dog faces and stuff like that. They yeah. don't. They don't really realize what an amazing augmented reality tool that that yeah. Snapchat is. And I like if we're if we're building something, even if we're like trying to do a quick prototype of something, it's so it's fast to jump, way faster to jump into Snapchat and prototype something out. Really, that's and, all. And, yeah, so this is an example. This uses an image marker of a book. This is virtual reality, a memoir, New York Times bestseller. It's a pretty sweet it's, cover. Yeah, it's, it's written by me. It's not a real book. <laughs> but so we're playing the video here. We have a, a book being placed oh. on a table with a Snapchat lens. Yeah. And so it's it's got a real Harry Potter thing going on where the, the book cover comes to life. That was the um we'll kill the audio on it. Yeah. The uh that's kind of the vibe that I got when I because I first heard about this a little while ago, and that was I mean, that's very Harry Potter. That's right. yeah, I mean, the, the poster is to... like serious black where he's screaming and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think a lot of people don't know, I think people kind of maybe somebody who isn't as familiar with augmented reality mm-hmm. or even Snapchat. Yeah, like what what can it do? Yeah, cuz I think a lot of people and I myself included with the augmented reality stuff is that for the longest time I thought that you had to have these QR codes. That was a very early Right, yeah, that uh, was way the, of introducing the, it. The first version was QR codes cuz yeah. the the camera needs to have something to track, it needs something to grab onto. Yeah. But it's like like climbing a wall, it needs grips. So nice. a nice complex image gives it lots of grips to grab onto. Yeah. And so it can do that with pictures now. And pictures are great, actually, if there's a lot of contrast and a lot of variety going on right. in that picture. Can... So there still has to be some um, talk with, you know, if they're working with you guys and they have a book cover or whatever it may be, there needs to be a designed, an intentional photo. Yeah, to be so able to. It's like... Logos can be problematic, and this is actually funny because even with our company logo, it's a little too simple, <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of bums me out that <laughs> that the, the camera has trouble grabbing it. So yeah. I, I can't really do a cool AR oh, thing man. with our logo yet. But Hindsight. yeah, um, regrets. That's <laughs> rag rats. Um, I um, when it comes to what was the other. Um, we had another tap. What was some of the other? Uh, oh, it's the, what was the, the other v- Vimeo the, link that we had up here? The, the Hamilton one. The Hamilton one. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one. This one's crazy, and actually, it's funny because like Snapchat, like the execs love this lens. They show it off all the time. That's when, cool. When when Snap is doing you know public talks and stuff, they'll they'll show this one off as well. Is it? So I got a little insider information. Is that your mouth? Yeah, that is my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you look close, you can see it. It matches pretty good. I, it The animation I, on it is so good. Yeah, well, it's not animation. It's me lip syncing. Oh. That's that's the secret to that lens. That I, that's amazing. Now it's out. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 built, I built a lens that puts 
that texture on my mouth and then i recorded oh. myself lip syncing and then exported that as an animation sequence on that's there. cool super clever this guy <laughs> 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 oh, no man. that I, i'm really proud of that oh uh, i don't think i ever i don't think it, i really it makes me carry around a ten dollar bill in my wallet just, just so, so can, you can pull it just out so I can like, that out yeah check this out yeah. did i was looking on twitter did um maybe i'm the guy um like the lead from hamilton so yeah Lin, he... Lin manuel miranda they yeah w- they they showed this off at the snap partner summit this last april i think i was out there for that yeah and and it was during their big keynote speech and stuff and then they were showing off the 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 functionality of the new snap camera because it, it does this image search thing now where you point your camera at something and you and you touch the screen it'll like look for it and and try to find really? a relevant thing and so what they were showing it as an example, like point out a $10 bill and it'll bring up this lens and they brought this up that and I was cool. asking them later, I was like, how did you guys get permission to do that? <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, our, our, one of our guys is friends with Lin-Manuel and showed, oh, it, showed it to him man. and got his permission and stuff. And I was That's like, so, cool. so geeking out about that, man made it. So I was like, yeah, have him call me. <laughs> <laughs> call him. Yeah. Uh, so when we talk about like uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about Snapchat because um, I, I mentioned this earlier. Gary V talks. He's a big proponent. I think he's an investor in Snapchat. Um, yeah. He's an early investor. Um, he likes the the immediacy of it, the the um, scarcity of the content. We kind of have to tune right, yeah, in. Yeah, things things disappear after twenty four hours. So yeah, you gotta you gotta be with it. And so what what um, what he also said is that it is. They are not, he said that they are not a social media platform. They are more of a, I mean, they are, but they are more a tech company. Yeah. And I think Snap would actually say we're a camera company. That's, that's cool. Because yeah. uh, they, they've built other, other tools and stuff as well. Not just Snapchat. There's Snap Camera, which works yeah. with like your, your webcam. So you can overlay AR effects on your webcam. If you're doing like yeah. a Twitch stream or something like that. I've seen I, some of those. Yeah, I know more more people are are doing that kind of thing now. Yeah, I usually see it when um uh there'll be like those Twitch highlights where the um the, they'll lose tracking and their identity gets revealed and they're like oh no, <laughs> but they're like really some of these um you know some of these kids are making these I'd imagine they're the like some of these are kids are making these filters or yeah, maybe they're like, like do you have access to the snapchat library when you're using snap camera yeah Is so like, like any lens you build can yeah. can jump over and nice. be- become a a lens for for that as long as this you know there's there's like world lenses, which is like when you turn the camera around and you can mm. you can see something happening in the world that won't work but if it's something that tracks your face it'll yeah it work on that the your um camera. like your bird box uh lens had that feature right where if you face it towards yourself yeah so i that's that's the thing like when i'm making a lens i try to i try to throw something extra in there you know so it's yeah quality i don't know <laughs> <laughs> unique yeah try to give it that little extra thing and there's yeah it, I, i'll often try to like include a little easter egg or so there's something in there for yeah for the people that are using it a lot I thought it was, if, if you guys have snapchat i i'm not going to reveal what the i mean i think it was I, I thought it was really cool the what happens when you when you switch that switch that camera around yeah well you switch the camera around also if you touch if you touch the blindfold something happens and then if you switch the camera around again something else happens so that's like a little insider information yeah there's a lot of a lot of interactivity on that (laughs) that lens and i've had ones where i've like put my heart and soul and made this like really interactive lens and it gets hardly any views and then Ah. i make a i make a crazy pickle and it gets (laughs) get so many views so isn't that how it goes I, though yeah I, I think the formula <laughs> is that it's inversely proportional to the amount of effort that you put in <laughs> right exactly yep take a cell phone video of a cat yeah you get millions of yeah, views million make a full-length movie <laughs> <laughs> oh man um did you I, I i i did have a question for phil uh yeah. when it comes to creating an uh uh a lens and the viability of that as a like a revenue stream for someone a young creator with a similar background to you would you advise uh somebody take the lane that you're in yeah well uh I, did, snapchat? I don't get paid by snapchat to make lenses that's it's a it's a fun thing that i do yeah um but brands and artists will will come to me and say hey can you make a lens for my song or my brand or nice or something like that and so we'll we'll 
that's how kind of how we get paid right by, by making Snapchat. Yeah, I was I was wondering because I did see uh, when we pulled up the uh, the Lens Creator Studio, it said anyone can be a lens creator. Yeah. So I saw that. I'm like, wow. There's there's a low. There's a there's there's a low buy-in. I mean, you do have to have the skills, of course. Right. And we talked, you know, briefly about this earlier. But to uh, I just would wondered how. Yeah. So they they do welcome everybody, and and actually the 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 lens creators. Uh, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of good documentation out there. They're awesome. really they're really good at you know. There's a forum where you can ask questions and stuff. There's good tutorials out there. Lens creators are making tutorials as well. That's cool. And I think any of us are more than happy to talk about creation or or help people if, yeah. if they're having an issue and want to want to work through it. So that's a good segue too into <clears throat> you. Um, you mentioned that you uh, your fan base the the what are they, what are they called again? <laughs> the... Yeah, so it it started off as a gag. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna have a fan club and it's gonna be called the Filluminati. No, I, <laughs> I actually, I I did say the word cult, so it's <laughs> it, it's it's kind of called a cult. Well, it, they they have expressed interest that they want you to do a, like a YouTube show. Yeah, um, and I said. I don't know what it would be about, and, <laughs> and, and who knows? I could be terrible on camera. The, the, well, we'll the, find out. The jury <laughs> is still out on that. <laughs> what if you did a YouTube show with all your lenses as different characters? That would where be cool. they would they would, like a, they would just yeah, that would be cool. That would be kind of cool, and like yeah. be able to source that through other people and just see if you can build a narrative. You're talking about story time with your daughter earlier, so right. that's what kind of got me thinking. Yeah, cool. and, and you know, I've made cartoon lenses and stuff like that, yeah, and cool. I, I've. I've made some lenses with the hope that people would take that and do stuff with it. I know yeah. I know people have done that on TikTok quite a bit. Yeah. There's been some memes created from lenses that I've made. That's cool. Can you is TikTok cuz if for anybody that doesn't know, TikTok is a uh, huge massive platform for, for Yeah, kids. it's grown really fast. Re yeah, it's grown really and, fast. And kind of in the absence of musically, I think which they were bought out or musically bought TikTok or made. I know it's I, by I, musically. I, is it? Yeah, I, I know they're I know. attached somehow. But okay. um, they uh, do. They have some AR elements. Or yeah, they, so they they have yeah. some effects as well. And, yeah, and I don't. They know. aren't quite as heavy. It's nowhere near the caliber that Snapchat has that I've seen. Right. Um, but it is a viable. I mean, it's a platform where there's a lot of attention. Um, do you do you do you see them kind of? opening that up to people to be able to create um, yeah I, I think eventually they will I, maybe they don't have the tool set built quite yet you know snap yeah. was kind of first to market with that and so everybody's trying to play catch up whether yeah. it's instagram or you we, we've we've mentioned this a couple of times and i think it i just want to reiterate it it's it's the tool set that really has made snapchat so friendly for creators yeah um, I, I i know for me it that's that's made the difference is, yeah is that i've i've created on on Spark, which is uh, which is Instagram, Facebook Messenger, right? Their AR tool set, and it's I don't I don't come from a programming background, so it was maybe a little more of a learning curve for me to try to try to get in there. I mean, I did I was able to make lenses there, and yeah, but I kind of just like okay, cool, and went back to Snap, and yeah, you know, it's an environment where I'm more familiar, and I can just like I'm level ninety nine on that now. So. <laughs> <laughs> end game going on yeah for so yeah long. yeah i've maxed out i've maxed out all my levels so <laughs> oh man so what i mean is there anything else from so me personally i'm i'm primarily in the the 360 video vr space so augmented reality is this thing that i i know the value of and i see the value of and i i it's a viable solution for for businesses and for creators and so when you look at the horizon of like what's to come and what what you're most excited about in this medium, what like what comes to mind? What are some of the things that you just like it keeps you up at night? You're just like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. I I well, I, I think I think there's people like AR because of the engagement mm -hmm. to it. It it just gives you something beyond just a video that's passive. I'm just watching this video versus yeah. AR, which lets you interact and lets you do stuff, and so. That's only going to grow. I think you know Apple's coming out with with some some yeah. AR AR glasses, I believe, and they've and, been acquiring patents like crazy for yeah, a while now. Yeah, and and Hololens too is on the horizon as well. Yeah, and I think as as wearables become 
become the primary form- format if, mm-hmm. if we don't have to be on our phone looking at things anymore and we yeah. can just see it in a glasses that's really going to blow things up for that would be how we see ar do you see snapchat getting into that game i mean because yeah, they have we have well, the, the snapchat uh sunglass that they yeah, have yeah so they, primarily... they have spectacles and actually yeah. they're they're i think they're available now they've they've got a new version of them that have a camera on each side and so it takes uh, 3d 3d videos of to be able to um incorporate it gets the depth map data or am i going too far into that uh, I, is it easy to recognize filters like if you record could you easily put a uh, yeah so you can actually put put snapchat filters and lenses into uh, into your footage that you've shot that's with the thing it's not it's not displaying on your right yeah uh, not there yet uh, on the glass but not yeah not yet that's that's <laughs> that's the next thing that's that's what i get excited about so okay so when we look at the future of of wearables that's um man because obviously we, it started with with google uh google glass google glass uh, uh, a little bit awkward ooh, yeah a little <laughs> bit awkward not so successful yeah um but kind of gave us a glimpse into yeah what's it got possible. people excited i mean yeah. they, like people are like oh can we do this with it and they're like well not yet yeah and so that's kind of why it 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 rose and fell so quickly it's just it, yeah it couldn't quite deliver on what the expectations were and I, I think that was also like magic leap is another example mm-hmm. of of one that that made big promises and they're trying to yeah. catch up with those uh i you know i there's a lot of skepticism with magic leap for the longest time and yeah. even even still like when we talk about um you know looking at magic leap when it came out i think they came out early because they realized that the market the hardware market was about to get flooded right yeah everybody um, was was working on that i because... say flooded but there were gonna be other <laughs> contenders right yeah um like more established brands that are that yeah are, that are doing that that people are like oh microsoft has one I, i'm gonna go with those guys they've got a whole suite of tools that go with it right yeah. yeah and and i don't i think people don't like having to wear an extra like it's there's a lanyard that yeah it attaches to a battery pack and you know i don't know if you've ever worn a fanny pack before <laughs> Not, not a good look. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried doing any type of physical activity with a loose satchel around your waist. Yeah, but, uh, and a cord. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's super cool. Yeah. That, um. So yeah, the the thing is like things have to get a lot lighter. The like the processing power needs to speed up mm-hmm. and and we're gonna it, fit it in uh, <clears throat> to fit it to fit it in a, like a glasses. wearable glasses type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, and the look has to has to be there too. Like if if the yeah because like, nobody wants like a, a but <laughs> yeah er, early vr experienced this with with oculus like the the dev kit and stuff yeah it, it had the screen door effect like is the, the the it's like what happens when you put a 960 video and wrap it around your head yeah you get and you can see all the where yeah. the pixels start and stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i i do see a lot of potential with the um i was talking i was at an enterprise convention and a lot of what in the enterprise room or uh, realm, we have training. Like they use a lot of that a- the AR filters for not AR filters, but AR technology, mixed reality technology for ch- on the job training. Yeah, and some of the hardware that I saw there. I mean, Bose is getting into the AR game, which was really it really threw me for a loop. That was uh, yeah, well, they, interesting. They put out a headset that has a that has a. It's not AR, but. It, right. it shoots the sound right great right into your ear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and they they were talking about uh, being able to spatialize content to where it's um, like at a certain part of a factory, you could um, like have something pinned. So if another worker came in after you, like they oh, could put little and, notes, and see what kind of yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't use this machine. That's perfect. Don't yeah. <laughs> don't place hand. Yeah. Here. <laughs> um. Well. Yeah, that that is a thing that that we're we're looking at as well is is giving giving workers tools to to look at a machine, you know, because that's like like our business, Big Bonsai, kind of focuses yes. on using VR to actually solve problems. We're not we're not like building games and stuff. We want right. to actually use VR to to help train people or to visualize a prototype or be able yes. to walk through a space before it's real or before it's you know yeah. Or you know, if you're able to explode a piece of machinery, yeah, um, while or, you're or point at your it. phone at it and have yes. have someone on tech support on the other side and say, "Oh, here's your problem right here," and then show you something oh, on your screen man. to be yeah. able to see, like, "Hey, connect these wires here." That's 
so do, does the skill set um i mean obviously obviously it does the um getting started in with snapchat bringing it into that enterprise uh, application is that something that's a that you're able to take the skills that you've you've done with yeah so it's, i i actually use snapchat a lot for pr- early prototyping like quickly knocking something really? out that's even a more industrial type of thing like i did one that is like this water pump and you touch it and like it, it does an exploded parts thing so it comes uh, apart and you can spin it around and see it from any angle that's and, cool and gives you gives you like a 3d view of of this component you can yeah. see it man well i i know that i had um coming into this conversation we we had we had a couple of conversations beforehand just um you know i've i've we've you know, met before and talked about technology and, and ar and in the vr space um if people wanted to be able to reach out to you um whether it be for business purposes or w- you do you want to share like your socials or your email, like anything to, if people needed to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Yeah. So, I mean, Snapchat is <laughs> Snapchat? Ob- obviously <laughs> maybe a really good way to get a hold of If the first one wasn't Snapchat, like, I'm, I'm giving them a call. I'm yeah. Gonna... <laughs> just, I'll get out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Snapchat or uh, I think we'll, we'll put up the link to the company website and, nice. and people can reach out there. But yeah, if you just want to check out my work, just to see what kind of goofy stuff I'm into, and yeah, you know, Snapchat is maybe the best best way to see see the the variety of lenses that I've worked on and and stuff like that. Phil, I definitely appreciate you coming in here. <laughs> yeah, this, this was awesome. Been, yeah, it's been fun. This is this has been good, uh, guys. You know, if you if you have any interest in AR at all, I highly recommend. And for people that are watching this in Nashville, in Tennessee, like he's here. A lot of people really they they think that a lot of this talent is uh, in L. A. and San Francisco and New York, right. but the thing about Nashville, yeah, I'm is the a, one guy that's here. You're the one guy. That's here. <laughs> what did you say? Like you're one of um, yeah. So there's there's a hundred there's like a hundred now of yeah. like official lens creators. Yeah, and you're one of the few and in the southeast. Yeah, I, I think I might be the only one in this region. Wow. Okay, but I don't know. So that's I mean that's a huge if you guys are in town if you if you guys are near Nashville or in the southeast uh, because you probably um, there are very few selections I highly recommend you check out Big Bonsai um, your co owner and uh, creative director for it. they can handle a lot of um, a lot of that work it's it's a lot of agency type work a lot of bigger projects you, you guys can handle yeah um, you know any any size project any size that. project any yeah. size project <laughs> um, they're they're a group of ga- great. <laughs> A group of great guys. <laughs> say uh, that fast. Say though. that. <laughs> I tried. It didn't yeah. work out well. Uh, I highly recommend you check those guys out. Um, they've done some amazing work. Good people. Phil, thanks so much for coming on, man. Yeah, I thanks, really Kyle. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's been great. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for the Actual VR Podcast. You know, there are a lot of uh, a lot of talented people in the immersive tech world, and they don't have a platform to speak on. And that's, that's part of the reason why we created this show. So if you've enjoyed talking and learning from these people, uh, be sure to check out the podcast. Like and subscribe. Do what you need to do to let us know that you're listening and you enjoy what we're doing. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Play. We're on Apple Music. We're on any platform podcasts are found. If you happen to miss the actual VR show, it comes out every Monday. This podcast comes out every Friday. I will see you next week. See you then.